Hey guys, everyday fishing outers. What are you what are you doing, Sean? The search of the three missing Montgomery College students continues in Frederick County tonight. Ten days and thousands of man hours have been unable to produce any clues. We have a few leads, a um, few other options we want to take advantage of and just try to put together some, uh, some pieces to this puzzle. Do you believe the occult may be involved in the disappearance of your son? <laughs> I'm so scared. Hey guys, Everyday Aficionados here with another movie review for you, and tonight we have The Blair Witch Project. This is, of course, the 1999 found footage horror film, so let's get into it. I think it's really good at that sort of slow build, and you get a feeling that this movie really knows like where it wants to go and the pace that it wants to get there, which I think is really interesting considering that 99% of this film was just ad-libbed. The lines and the dialogue was, you know, all improvised from the actors that are in it. So I think it's impressive how they were able to get that pacing really nice considering they didn't really have much of a structure. It really bumps that, like, lost footage aspect up a notch because it, it feels real. It feels like these are just these people who are lost in the in the woods. And another thing that really helped with that too is that they were just by themselves. You know, they had to navigate their way through the woods on their own. This was shot over like the period of like eight days or something like that. So they were worn down by the end and you can see that in their performances. One of the things I do have to complain about a little bit though is some of the cuts that they do, it really jumps around sometimes and you're kind of left trying to get your bearings, wondering what's going on now and what has happened since, you know, they've stopped recording and started recording. It gets a little jarring at times. You could say that does increase the disorientation of the film. It feels very visually disorienting because, you know, the film equipment that they're using, it's not very high definition. You're not really seeing everything that you could see and because it's mostly like handy cam style visuals, it's very shaky and it feels very disorienting just from visual aspect of it. But yeah, you're right, some of the cuts can be a little overly disorienting, but I do think that overall it's pretty balanced in that you can get a sense of where you are in the film and what's going on most of the time. Something else that I really liked about the cameras is they have two different cameras. So they have the 16mm that's shooting on film and then they got the Handycam shooting on tape. And the Handycam's in color and the 16mm is in black and white. It gives a level of visual variety to the film where it switches between black and white and color. It's kind of interesting. It's like the two cameras have their own personalities. It's just a really interesting device, um, something I've never really seen before in a movie, where the object that's taking the footage plays a part in the film itself, you know what I mean? Where it's literally being passed around between different characters, where sometimes Josh is behind the camera asking questions, sometimes it's Heather, sometimes it's Mike, and it sort of switches up the power dynamics between them. Going off of that sort of character dynamic, I think it's really interesting how all the characters really take turns playing different roles, like they all each get a chance to play the bad guy or the villain of the group. They all get the chance to play like the voice of reason at times. They just feel like real three-dimensional characters, you know, they all have flaws. This film really sort of pulls you into their dynamic and almost kind of makes you feel like a fourth member of the group. And I think that like the handheld camera aspect of it really does that too because you know you're basically seeing what they're seeing so you feel like you're there so when you have like these disorienting shots where you just see nothing but black and all you hear are these noises you're there with them you're experiencing those noises and you're just like wondering what's going on and what you're hearing and it's really creepy and interesting in that aspect that introductory sequence gets you so primed for going into that forest and just waiting for what you're going to see there. You hear these vivid descriptions of the actions that were done in the woods. So when they finally do go into the woods, you are just waiting for that image. And I think the film is very clever because 
they realized that nothing that they could have invented for the film would live up to what the viewer is imagining from the stories they were given in the beginning of the film. So they don't really show anything. You get all of these things, all of these details that are just enough to be unnerving and just enough to make you imagine, like, what is behind it. Piles of rocks, voodoo figures hanging off of trees. They never quite go all the way and visualize for you. You know, it really has that sort of fall feel to it. You can clearly tell that it's autumn from all the leaves and, like, the bare trees and stuff. And it really adds to that sort of creepy atmosphere, too, because, like, even the woods feel dead. Another thing that kind of, like, adds to the creepiness just for me, this movie was filmed in the Northeast, and the woods that they're in just, like, resembles all the woods that are around me and where I live. Now, I could kind of see where audiences would get a little bit frustrated with a movie like this. It does have that slow build, and that's really nice, but it kind of feels like it almost builds to nothing. But to me, it never was really an issue, because the lost film aspect of this was so convincing. It's just like, well, you know, that's the footage that they found. And another reason why I really don't have a problem with it is because, really, the whole film for me is about that mystery. It's really what sets the tone. So, to me, this movie was all about not knowing. It was all about the questions that get raised in your head, like, what's out there? What the heck is this thing that's bothering them? Is it this witch? Or is it just, you know, regular people messing with them? You know, where are these sounds coming from? That mystery is what makes it creepy and is what really sets this film apart. And another interesting thing is there's a really subtle gender dynamic happening in the film. As we've seen with a lot of the horror films we've reviewed, the female character ends up being sort of the strong character who ends up being the last one alive, who's typically the leader, the more level-headed of the group. But I think what's great about this movie is that's not so much the case. Heather is flawed, but she's not weak. That's what makes her such an interesting character. It's just another one of those sort of smart aspects of the film that really is managed pretty elegantly. I will say, though, that the acting did get a little stilted in certain places. There were just certain scenes where the characters' actions felt a little forced and not really very convincing. I thought the acting was really good and very real. Up until the end of the film, probably about like 20 minutes until the end, really on like the last day where these characters are really supposed to be like at their wit's end. They're basically broken at this point. I think the actors kind of went a little bit over the top and a little bit unrealistic with their performances there. The big thing that struck me was that scene where Mike is just sitting underneath the tree rocking back and forth talking about Oh, I found cigarettes, so everything's going to be okay now. It felt out of place and sort of cheesy compared to the realism in the rest of the film. And also, I think a little bit before that point is where the pacing felt a little wonky to me. There's that period where after Josh goes missing, and then the next night where they hear him being tortured, I feel like that day felt like dead time to me, you know? Like, nothing was really established new during that time. You were just waiting for the night, pretty much. It's established that the nighttime is when the really the meaningful things happen, and the daytime starts to become more and more filler, and I think that works up until that point in the film, because I felt like at that point, the stakes needed to be at their peak, so it felt like that section was spaced out a bit too far and was giving us too much time in between the really intense moments. So yeah, I had a great time watching this movie. It really scared me, honestly. We're going to rate this one a three and a half voodoo stick figures out of five. A girl answered a math problem. You know what that means. A witch! It's a good little film. It's got a nice runtime. Doesn't overstay its welcome. It utilized that faux documentary style and the found footage aspect very well. And it's just a very well-designed movie. Yeah, I agree. This film is just very real and very creepy. And it's definitely effective for what it is. I think that this is definitely one that has received some undeserved flack from a lot of people. I think a lot of people got onto that sort of bandwagon where 
they all wanted to make fun of the film. There were a lot of parodies of the film that came out afterwards. It was just one of those movies that was cool to hate. It's a film that's just supposed to give you a good time. It's playing on a lot of fears that we all had growing up. We're all familiar with the stories of the witch who lives in the woods near our house or the haunted abandoned building where someone was killed or someone died. It takes those things and it makes them very real through the medium of film. And I think that has to be commended. And they did a great job of it. What do you guys think? Did you like it when it first came out? Or have your feelings changed about it? What do you think was successful and wasn't successful? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And be sure to check back next time for the next review on our Spooktober Marathon when we're taking a look at The Shining. We're the everyday aficionados, and remember, whether it's the cores, movies, games, or beer, if you're looking for reviews, we've got them right here. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you later.